We're in the season of Lent and we're journeying with Jesus as he walks toward Jerusalem and the cross. Our meditation today will use our whole bodies and our imagination and it's based on Luke chapter 4 where Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. I invite you to relax your bodies. You might like to place your hands on your knees or in your lap. Times you may even like to close your eyes. From Luke chapter 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days and at the end of them, he was hungry. I invite you to think of a time where you have been in the desert or a wilderness place. Feel the hot sun beating down on you. Feel the warm breeze as it blows on your face. In the distance, the horizon shimmers in the warmth. It's vast and empty and bright. You can feel the thirsty land beneath your feet. It's dry and parched. Keep this wilderness place in your mind's eye. Now, after being rescued from slavery in Egypt, the nation of Israel wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. And Moses reminded them of their wandering in the desert. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, says Moses. Now Jesus, he has been led into a wilderness place by the Spirit. God has brought him to this dreadful desert. And he's tired and he's hungry. And at his weakest, the devil comes to test his heart. The devil said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. I invite you to pause this video and if you can, go and try and find some stones. Something from the garden will be fine, or something hard. Hold these stones in your hand. I wonder what stones there are in your life at the moment. What needs do you hunger for as you journey in your wilderness? The nation of Israel was referred to as God's firstborn son and they cried out for bread in the wilderness. And God, he heard their cry and as a concession, he granted them manna in the desert. 
So it's not an unusual or an unreasonable suggestion to turn stones into bread. Yet in contrast to Israel, Jesus, who is the true son of God, he rejects the miracle of bread in the desert. Sure, he's going to do miracles later and he'll even multiply bread. But these miracles will be for other people, not for himself. See, Jesus trusts God's provision. Jesus lives on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Can you trust your stones, your needs to the Lord? I invite you to place your stones on an open Bible, on the Word of God. And as you do so, give your needs to the Lord that you may trust every word that comes from the mouth of God. Luke has arranged his material in a very particular way to actually correspond to the entire of his gospel account. Each temptation corresponds to a part of his narrative, his story. This first temptation corresponds to the beginning of Jesus' ministry in the wilderness. See, it's in the Galilean wilderness that Jesus is baptized and where he is named the Son of God. And in this temptation, he proves that he is the true son. The second temptation. Jesus, uh, the devil led Jesus up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said to Jesus, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus travels with the devil up to a high place. We're going to do some traveling today as well, and we're going to use our knuckle to represent a very high place, a high mountain. So make your hand into a fist and very slowly, perhaps starting from near your elbow, trace your forefinger toward your knuckle. You might like to tap slowly as you trace. And with each tap, imagine taking a step, walking up to a high place. You're carrying a burden on your back. And with each step, the burden gets heavier and heavier. Stop once you reach the peak of your knuckle. It's here on this high place that the devil tempts Jesus to cast off his burden and to immediately receive the glory that is due him. All he needs to do is to fall down and worship the devil. Yet, of course, this is a counterfeit promise for any power that the devil has has first been given to him by God, the Father Almighty. 
So Je Jesus refuses to take any shortcuts. Instead, he takes on your burdens and he continues on his path back down the mountain. As you take a deep breath, imagine a heavy weight being lifted from your shoulders and slowly tap and trace your forefinger from your knuckle down toward your elbow. Jesus is walking toward Jerusalem. He's carrying your burdens to the cross. This second temptation corresponds to the travel account in the central portion of Luke's gospel. It's as he travels that Jesus learns that his identity will lead to suffering. Suffering first before glory. It's only after his suffering, death and resurrection that Jesus will come again with power and great glory. The third temptation. The devil led Jesus to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all his tempting, he left Jesus until an opportune time. The devil dresses up this final and last temptation as a scriptural citation. He places Jesus high above the temple in Jerusalem so that he can barely even touch it. He's at its highest point. God and the temple, they're placed under Jesus' feet as if despised. And it's here that Satan twists God's word. He quotes from Psalm 91. Yet the words of scripture, they're not to be used as some sort of amulet, some sort of magic formula which brings us personal protection, angels to come down and rescue us. The word of scripture is not something that we can invoke to ward off terrors or attacks or arrows or suffering. But rather, Scripture, God's Word, creates and grows faith and trust in us. Trust that nothing can truly harm those who live by God's Word alone. Trust that Nothing can touch those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High and those who rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This temptation, this third and final temptation, it corresponds to Jesus' final weeks, week and days in Jerusalem. And it's here that Jesus lives the fact that he will not be rescued from suffering and death. The angels won't come to whisk him away, but rather God will rescue all creation through Jesus' suffering and death. 
I invite you now to spend some time listening to and praying out aloud Psalm 91. Let the words wash over you. As you hear them, I invite you to imagine this psalm is being written and spoken to Jesus himself as he trusts in God, his refuge. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, so that they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will come, he will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With a long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to carry our burdens to the cross. As we walk through our own wilderness, we pray that through your word, you may create and sustain faith in us so that we may trust in you as our refuge in all circumstances. Amen.